Hello, in this demo hour, I'm going to work through designing and um, creating and helping to give you the techniques for making this lovely um, little sun face pendant um, made with copper sheet and wire and with um, lovely uh, crystals and gemstones and all sorts of things uh, to work with and seed beads and we're going to going to go through all sorts of techniques um, shaping and cutting and, and finishing the copper sheet making a little 3d face um, adding wire work uh, features in there and setting a uh, pendant in place and also we're going through how to make the little moon and half moon um, copper sheet elements and these designs can be um, scaled up and all the techniques can be used to make this larger um, sun face um, wall hanging and you can see also the little um, earrings that I've made really similar techniques just in 0.8 millimeter wire for the earrings and um, scaling back out all the sundial all the sun face um, large sun face element is um, this larger um, swathes of gemstones around lots of a little bit more detail a little bit more detail in the sun rays but that's mainly the difference, just scaling it up and you can see how you can use these techniques to make um, a larger feature piece. And I just hope you enjoy using the techniques in this demonstration to really extend your knowledge and of working with metal and uh, incorporating with wire. Okay, so we're going to go through the processes involved in making this design, working with copper sheet and cutting it out and finishing it and shaping it into a face. Um, making the wire work frames and the assembly of everything together um, just step by step take it um, and it's all achievable um, and you can put together this design and um, use those skills to make the larger or smaller designs I showed you at the beginning of the video so each um, stage will need a different set of tools um, so we'll go through the tool list at each stage um, rather than give you a big long list now. So I'm just going to move on to the next stage. I'm just going to go through the process now of um, sawing out the little copper disc that's going to go into, into the centre of the sun face. Um, and we're doing this from a flat sheet of 0.5mm thickness copper sheet. And I've used a little makeup uh, lid actually, uh, anything that's about 3cm, 3.2cm wide. And um, I've just drawn around with the, with the marker and so that I can um, draw a circle um, and you need a, a German style saw frame it's called and um, with a three or four zero uh, jewelry blade um, saw blade in there um, saw teeth downwards and, and really tight nice and tightly in the frame and you do that by just making sure that the um, you loosen up the little screws push push the frame a bit uh, with your finger so it's nice and taut and then then tighten up the screws again so this blade is really taut and and, and going to cut really easily through the copper i got a short saw blade because i'm using a, a, a half blade that snapped in two so i'm not wasting um those half blades always keep them because they're useful so um i've got an old bit of cork mat actually but you can use a bench block or anything like that on your on your jewelry desk um, making a workbench um, to to work against. Um, what I've done is just put a bit of beeswax on the blade just to lubricate it and it makes it cut through a bit more easily. And I'm just going to start making a cut. And because I've, my, this isn't really set at the right height, so forgive me, I'm going to have to make very small sawing motions. Keep the blade as vertical as possible until you get to the little circle. And there. Start to turn the piece of copper. And I'm also slightly turning the blade at the same time. Really, very, very small motions just to get it to turn. And then I can start to work around this circle. And I'm keeping the blade in, the, in its virtually the same place. Also, I do recommend wearing gloves at this point. Um, my hands are sort of pretty sort of work hardened, but um, if I, I do recommend wearing protective gloves um, and just make sure because there's some there's some um, sharp bits of metal that I don't want you to get cut on. So protective gloves are a very good idea. So you can see me working around 
um, this piece of this copper disc. Just, and try and keep the first the blade as vertical as you can. And in fact, really only cut on the downward stroke. So I'm using a very poor technique here. There we go. Just on the downward stroke and, and, and rotate round. And just work round a little disc of metal until you cut out a circle. So this that takes a bit of time. So I'm going to bring the blade back by sort of sawing in reverse. And I'll show you a piece of metal that we've cut out already. So I'm going to bring the workstation a bit more down to a, a level that we can work at and I'm going to focus in a little bit on what we're what we're, we remain with so from this this sort of rough piece of metal we should end up with a roughly circular disc and this edge is um, uh, it's got it's got irregular edges and it's possibly a bit sharp and might have some jagged bits so we need to work on that to get it all nice and smooth so to do that there's a few things you can use um, files and I've got some um, big files actually um, but also if you have needle files which are the smaller sort jewelry files they're great and all you do is work around and take the time work around this disc felt like you're filing your nail so you just basically put, put it round in one direction like that and then downwards and all the way around just to spend a long time just really working on this disc to make it circular um, sometimes you can use um, a nail a file um, or an emery board actually that's what I was going to say an emery board is quite useful for, for the fine tuning stuff so um, that's for working on small pieces of metal that's if you haven't got a file um, but one of these big files is really good because you can really work on the, the surfaces all the way around. And then when you get to a stage where it's a bit more sort of smooth, you can feel that feel from a sharp, rough edge, you'll get down to something that feels more like, more, more like a butter knife and it won't feel sharp and horrible at all. I tend to finish these off with either a bit of sandpaper, but I've got a sandpaper block, which is quite a soft, spongy thing, and it's quite good for getting into small spaces. And I just basically work all the way around really really making sure the edge of this disc is nice and smooth so after after you've finished all this you should have a really nice smooth disc and spend a lot of time just making sure this is really nice and smooth so you can see what i've done here uh, i've started to draw a little face i'll do that on the rough disc so you can so you can uh, work out what we're doing so I've drawn a little face, so you've got a little bit of a, a template, I suppose. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm going to be doing. So I want to be able to just work on um, those areas to make them shaped into a face. And you're quite, it's quite, um, you're quite welcome to actually make up the pendant without shaping the face. You can put the, all the frames on and make it up as a flat sun face. That's absolutely fine. This is just additional technique to make, um, to see whether you could like to sort of learn how to make some um, shapes and noses, and eye spaces and things like that. I'm making a little dotted line because one of the frames, the face shouldn't reach the edge of the disc basically. So I'm just doing this so that we don't, um, make um, the eyes too near the edge of the disc and things like that so we want a little bit of space so I've dotted that line round and then I've got a dotted line halfway down just to mark halfway through the face and then what I'm going to do then is just sort of make a nose a little, little like that just to give an idea where the nose is like so and then just a little gap for the eyes and the eye has got to fit a six millimeter round as so the eye is going to be quite big really big eye and then a little squirrel you don't have to, the squirrel doesn't really matter really it just shows you where you're going to put your wire wet later on okay so they really these marks are not for the necessarily for the wire work they're for where you're making your shapes in the in the uh, copper disc Oh, around which and over which you're going to be putting your metal frames later on so that's a little sort of the mouth area so in the next part of the video demonstration we're going to go through shaping and molding um, the flat disc to make it into a sort of a sort of face a facial um, disc with cheeks and nose and eye eye 
eyes and mouth. It's going to be quite a rough face. It's not going to be beautifully formed or anything like that. It'll be, it means we've got a kind of 3D element to the sun face. So that's what we're going to do next. I forgot to say also um, that if you have um, these jewellery, oh, sorry, these metal cutting shears, they're also, you can cut round circles with them. Just make sure that this ridge surface is away from your um, your inside of your shape because otherwise you get marks on the metal. So, so I'm doing an example, you can just cut round, just really carefully cut round in a circle. Um, again, wearing gloves because it's, it's really sharp. Um, um, surfaces can result okay so you can cut around a circle for example with this just make you might have a bit more finishing to do <clears throat> if you use this but you can you can use those if you haven't got a saw and saw blade for example put that to one side so we're going to do a little bit of um, shaping and um, with that I'm going to use a dapping block um, which is ever so useful here's it got lots of little sort of pegs and um, with lovely round surfaces for uh, making shapes and little beautiful little block with little um, little circles inside so you can make little circular holes and we're going to use that to help us make um, the, the facial shapes so turning it from a flat disc to a, to a disc to a, to a 3d disc so I'm going to slightly put that to one side because I need to reach for things and have this the other things in the center um, but I want to use the uh, let's go for the three millimeter little little piece of um, little peg first of all and um, to start making the nose so I'm going to get one of the, the dapping block you can also use it on a sand sandbag as well I got a sandbag a sandbag as well so one of these things uh, which is obviously good for shaping and molding on um, you can you can start to make the shape of the nose um, so we have to form 3D outwards and inwards on this, so we'll be turning the piece over. So um, we'll do it on the on the sand block to show you what it might turn out like with us one of these, but it's probably better on a dapping block. I've got metalwork hammers, um, which is purely for metalwork. Okay, so they're um, they've got metalwork written all over it because the um, surface of the hammer is so dreadful you could never use it for hammering um, metal to give it a smooth surface. So right on that. So just use hammers, an old hammer or a building hammer or something like that with a nice big surface. And I'm just going to start in the middle of the, the nose with my three millimetre round um, end. I'm just making a little bit of a nose, nose shape. And you can see when you're using a sand, bat, sand block it tends to, to bowish a little bit. So I'm going to move straight on to the dapping box. I think it'll keep it a little bit more, um, keep it a little more, um, um, flat so I'm going to go pop it over but it's helped me actually place where I'm going to put my nose um, I'm just going to use it and just make a little nose imprint down there you go probably lost one of the light bulbs there frightened it into into, into darkness I started but you can see there's a little bit of a nose shape and then I just need to move it up to make the rest of the nose a tiny bit more upwards And see how that does. It's starting to make a nose. I'm going to just see if I can work on the sand block now and see whether I can just work up a little bit. Again, this is all trial and error. You can just practice on bits of scrap metal. Go up the nose a little bit with that now. And that's helped me just make that start to make that nose as a shape. Okay. So probably a bit more upwards, I think we'll we'll do. I can always come back to it and carry on shaping it. Ooh, my lights come back now. From one side, and there we go. Look, let's have a look and see whether it's found a little bit more of a nose. It's quite a pointy nose that one. Each nose, each face is different, a bit like human being. So I've got that. I'm just going to just turn it over. It doesn't particularly matter. Um, we want it fairly central, so I'm going to draw the face again from this side. So I've got a nose facing this way, and then I want to make sure the eyes are here. I know I drew it on the other side, but it's sort of 
it doesn't matter it just keeps you keeps you with an idea of where things should be in this little mouth so I'm going to make an indentation to the eyes in the opposite opposite direction so bringing back that lapping block I need a probably a bigger one for the eyes I'm going to go for a six millimeter for the eyes because I've got to fit a six millimeter um, um, I am um, little crystal in there or a gem and I've got that's the little one that fits that, that little eye so We'll just make sure I place it over where I need to place it over. And then just start to make an indentation. So you've got the nose coming outwards. So I want the indentation going to the other way into the dapping blocks. So I want it the other way now. So again, words, just check you've got it in the right place. And I've got that eye sorted out. That's quite good that will fit a nice little um, um crystal in there and um we'll do the other side in a moment that little crystal fit i know that little crystal will fit nicely in there now that's lovely good that's one of the eyes um so i'm just going to move over to the other side so i'm going to slide this in so i know that i'm pretty much over it I'm in the right place. So we've got the two eyes. So we've got the two eyes. We're starting to form this face. So we've got a nose coming out and two eyes. So the next thing I need to do after doing the eyes is uh, working on the nose a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to this bit of sand block. And just have my little go further up just to get a little bit more of an indentation. And then we'll work on those lips. And then the cheeks and other parts of the, the face. I'm just, it doesn't matter if it's slipped downwards because I'll just make more notes. It doesn't matter to, about that at all. Right, let's see how that's gone. Yeah, it's a bit more of a face. You can see there's a bit more projection with the nose. I'm sort of really quite happy about that. That's fine. There we go. A bit more there. Brilliant. So we've got a nose and we're going to go a little bit mouth and then cheek. So I'll do the mouth first. So um, it's just flipping it over. So I've got things um, completely there. That's it. So actually my drawing on the other side is completely irrelevant now because I just decided to go this way. So I'm just going to flip it over. And just get rid of some of these marks it's quite useful to to know how to do that um i haven't got any tissue paper with me so i'm just going to do it with my finger so please forgive me a bit of sharpie and you can get rid of the old marks quite happily without having to use anything else a bit of tissue is better than my fingers really but um forgive me i'm trying to do this with very little time and uh, there we go, get rid of that. I'll just have to have a sharpie all over my fingers. There we go. Right, so redrawing that in. And then the eyes. Bring that happy. And then the mouth is about here. So so there's the mouth. So we're just going to do a little bit of a an indentation. It's not going to be too much really. So I'm going to use that the sand block and just go here with the mouth. work up and down side to side just gradually moving this little bit up and down this little little peg up and down with this little um ball end and it just smoothly makes a little mouth coming out so just check with how much it's done um if not i might put it over a dapping block and have another go on the dapping block just to see whether it will go in a bit more with everything. Yeah, let's try. Yeah, it might work, work a bit better now. Over a, a slightly wider um, circular hole underneath it, just to give me a little bit. There we go. And I've got a little bit of a mouth coming out there. Just, a, just doesn't need much. Just a tiny element of a lip. It's not the end of the world if you haven't got too much of one. Again, you can spend a bit more time because... 
this is just for demonstration and as you practice you're going to get better at doing this so the next thing to do is some cheeks um so i'm just going to pick a bigger one i'll go for the six millimeter um the six millimeter for the cheeks so we're just going to put that on and just might do that on yeah that will on a bigger one just to let me six millimeter where's my six millimeter no i'll go for a bigger for a cheek i can't remember which one i used actually might be an eight let me see i'm just going here and just start to make a cheek here and that the cheek has got to go in the same direction as the nose and the mouth whereas the eyes are the only bits that go inwards so i've vaguely got the cheek the cheeks are going to sit here um so just make sure there's a vaguely in the center here and you don't need to have them as deeply set as the eyes so it's just a little suggestion of a cheek really rather than more than a big chubby cheek so that might even go bigger let's go for um i've got an 11 to make a really big cheeky cheeky cheek and we'll go on the other side see whether it'll start to do it and again sometimes these things don't form the first time round you just got to go back, back a few times and do do the the cheek there we are starting to be two little cheeks again um, you can work on this and um, as I say each face would be slightly different and then that's a little bit more of a cheek so there we are so I've got some cheeks they're a little bit close I think they'll be all right they're a bit close to the nose but it'll be all right as I say each face is a little bit different and next thing I'm going to do is just circularize the whole thing so i've got a bit larger block this is a um sort of dapping block that um that you can work with and there's some that are sort of deeper uh, more sort of have more curvature in them but i've got this one which is quite nice i've also got this one which is also lovely and that's probably quite a nice shape to actually use so anything that's going to give me a bit of a curve so i'm going to use um you can use a metal um sorry you often get these sort of wooden um sort of dapping um wooden pegs things to, to to work on or you can use a ball peen hammer to hammer around um you might get a few marks but it's often quite you get quite control that you work with that, that rather than a um or the peg so i tend to work with that because i'm not too worried about marks I'm going to work around the edge into a, with this circular block and just just get the edge just into a, a curve. So it's really nice, like a curved disc. Really lovely, all the way around. You can see I'm just, just rotating the piece all the way around so I can make this into a nice sort of curved disc. All the way around. And just obviously... Um, don't hammer too much over where the eyes are so you can see now you've started to make a few a bit more of a face um, with the shapes and things like that I might work on those cheeks a bit more now so what I'm going to do is bring up the ball peen um, and use it maybe over this circular disc here and just make the cheek a little bit more I suppose shallow and less prominent there we go so you can keep on working on these things see how that goes that smoothed it out a bit again i've got a few marks again you can polish these out with a polisher if you like to make it a bit sort of uh, a bit smoother but that'll do. I think the only thing I wouldn't like mind doing is making those lips a bit, bit more prominent. So again, I will say we'll go back to doing that little nose again a bit more. So I think again, um, just to to help it look a bit more like a nose. Once we start getting the frames on, 
it'll work a bit better as well um, because the frames really define the features really nicely. There we go. A bit more here. Okay, that's quite good. That's better. The only thing I wouldn't like is that the lip is a little bit odd here, but um, um, the other thing to do is just um, flatten this bit out a little bit. Take one of these. Those. Just go below here a little bit. Uh, metal work one. Picked up the wrong hammer. You've got to be so careful, it's so easy to pick up the wrong one. And I've got a smaller hammer for a bit of direction. And then I'm going to work back on this lip again. So basically that's that's it. So keep on going until you're happy with your face shape. It's not going to be perfect as a, as a face on its own. That takes a lot more kind of skill to and practice to work with metal so you can make a face on its own. But we started making a sort of, I suppose, a three-dimensional little face now. And the last thing to do is just use some pliers that you're, they're old ones, I suppose, and just go around the edge and curve it down, round so that it's all curved away at the edge now. So it curves up nicely, all in one direction. And what we'll do. And then we've got a sort of fit a face there, a face shape that's come into three dimensions rather than it being um, two dimensional disc. Um, the next thing to do is just do a little bit of drilling because when we fit the frames over, we just need to make sure Oh yeah, and the fine thing is just sand around these areas in case there's anything that's got, um, got um, I suppose rough and dark or anything like that. So just go rather right than have a quick sand over, and polish any scratches and marks and things like that and, uh, that you can get away. Um, but um, that's basically um, it. As I say, each face is going to be different, so which is fine. That's that's um, we all our faces are different too, and. Um, so you've got a nice sort of three-dimensional face with a nose. You can see that uh, an eye, an eye sockets to actually work with and put your frames over. So I'm just going to check quickly that I had got the mouth the right shape. That will do. Yeah, the mouth will fit over there nicely. So uh, that's fine. So next thing to do is put some holes in there, um, ready for frame attachment later on. So we'll move on to that stage now. Now we're going to go through um, the now we're going to go through the drilling of holes into the face um, so for frame attachment. And so first of all, we just need to make a little little some little holes so that we can work out where to drill. I'm just going to put a couple of holes here. Um, I'll put the eye frame on, showing showing where that's going to be. So you're going to have one. In fact, actually, I might bring that down a little bit down a bit here. Um, it might be good, worthwhile just skipping to making up the frames. Um, you can do that later in the video and then you've got them ready. And then you have, I have got one in the mouth, one just below the nose and one in, inside the mouth. So we'll do that. We've got one, two, three, four, five holes to drill. Um, and if you want to go make the frames and come back um, to this, this step. Now, um, I've got a couple of things I can use to drill with. I've got a little hand drill, just with a 1.2 millimeter drill bit. And I use the same one this on my uh, Dremel. So I've got a Dremel um, drill tool and I've got um, a hand drill as well. You always need to make a sort of guiding hole anyway. So these little hand drills are really, really useful. And you can pick them up um, um, this was a reamer, which, but I just put a drill bit in and it's really useful. So I'm just going to put, make a, a guide hole and you can either just, um, I'll just basically, I don't know if you can see, I'll take my hands away a little bit, but what I'm doing is actually just making a guide hole in, in the, in the copper, just by pushing it, pushing, uh, or, or circulating the little drill and it makes a little guide hole. Um, and you can just carry on and actually it just takes a bit of time, but you can drill a hole through with this. 
um, but the gem was so quick. Um, and I'm just going to show you, I've got a little indent there. I'm going to put the Dremel in place. Again, use gloves. And place it in over, over the, the hole and it goes straight through. Stop it immediately. I've got it over a cork mat so that you're going to protect your surface. If it stops and gets stuck on, just take just take the drill off. Don't try and attempt to do it with, with the drill working. Um, the piece will get very hot. So again, wearing gloves is... Um, really useful because the piece can get very hot it can spin around it could even cut you so be very careful and if you're and and i recommend that you can get some sort of um uh, sort of i suppose leather sort of light leather garden gardening gloves are really really good so i'm going to go away and drill the other holes and get ready for the next stage and here are the two faces um example i made um just to show how different they are Slightly different nose placement, slightly different eye placement, but um, essentially everything is the same. Um, and I've got five the five holes drilled. Um, you can probably see better from the the back if I move it closer to the camera. You can see the the drill holes through. And if I flip it over, you can see the drill holes um, two either side of the nose, in the middle of the forehead, and two by the fat the mouth. And when you do drill, just make sure you have the drill on a low setting and don't have it so whizzing around too high on a high setting. So always set it on a really slow, low drill in there so that things don't go out of control too quickly. Now we're going to go on to moving, moving on to making the frames. Okay, so now we're going to make all the frames um, to fit around the little copper disc shape we've made. And you're quite welcome to use a flat disc to do exactly the same frame shapes on just as here. Um, and uh, work on it and the, the outer surround just needs to be made a little bit bigger um, than the disc because actually what I did was get the, the face shape and popped it in the middle of the um, in the middle of the uh, sort of a drew around it with a little gap around it so you need about a millimetre or two around it because you need to have space for the wire wrapping and then I formed uh, then I drew out the shapes that would generally fit in there so um, you've got a black eye frame shape and then you've got a sort of vaguely red mouth shape. You've got a blue, a dotted line with a blue shape for an inner frame. And then you've got an outer frame in black and orange and the green marked um, sun rays frame all the way around like that. So we've got one, two, three, four, five frames. We've got the eye frame, the mouth frame, the inner and the outer circular frames and the sun ray frames. So we're going to go through ba the basics of making each one of those now. So I'll put these discs to one side and we'll work on those later when we set, start to assemble a piece. So we're going to start with the eye frame. I'm going to take, um, goodness me, um, I don't know, probably about 20 to 25 um, centimetre piece of wire a bit more that is is fine because you can always use the spare for making jump rings and things like that so i'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see what i'm doing um and again start making a bend in the center of the wire and we're going to use the template that marks the bottom of the nose and I'm just going to form one side of the face the eye, the eyes and the nose basically to, to show you how to make it. So I'm going to use the tips of my chain nose pliers. I've got a black mask over my, my hands now. Sorry about everything like that, but sort of um, sitting in the bedroom just making this um, with a few hours to go. <laughs> and then it's a uh, hospital shift tomorrow. So side of the nose done. I'm just going to make a bend for the side of the eye and then tight bend down to start to form the base of the eye socket and if you if it's not quite tight enough to start with use a side to side squeeze and clamp to make sure that's tight enough round for the eye socket up for the little side of the eye up for the little side of the eye if you can see little corner of the eye like a little lemon tip of a lemon around we go and I'm putting my fingers over the wire the whole time to sort of hold it in place I'm going to place it take it off the the sun disc
and then I made a little point for the eye, just check to the corner of the eye, just check it's in the right place, bring it up um, and just shape a little flare out, just grip the tip of the corner of the eye with your, your pliers and then push the wire outwards with your fingers just to flare it out. I'm going to turn the template so that I can work on it and do the side corner of the eye and bring this round and then what we're doing another quick kick back outwards here and then I'm going to cut it using this line here the line here of the guideline and again this picture and template should be uploaded to Facebook and there'll be a link to the album in the in the show album hopefully and then here we go here's a little clip there and I've marked this long line here and I'll do the other side of the nose um, or I would do normally but what I've done is just completed it one already it's just exactly the same, te same techniques but a mirror image there we go so that's what the um, nose and eyes template looks like next thing you need to do is um, we'll look do the mouth next so bring it back I'm going to use a shorter bit of wire probably 10 centimeters will do and we're going to do make very small motions and each mouth can be bigger or smaller as it, it doesn't really matter how big it is really but as long as it's a um, very generous mouth because it's a, a big smiley sun so in the middle of the sun oh, sorry in the middle of the wire which is about 10 centimeters long maybe 12 let's say 12 just gives off a bit more more wire make a little bend little v bend and little v bend either side of that v bend to start from the cupid's bow of the mouth so that's that, that's the start. Let's reshape it on the diagram. And then what I need you to do then is pull the wire inwards with the bend. Just check its position. I'm going to sharpen it up a little bit with a little kick there and a little clamp either side. Just to, cl to clamp it. There we go, that's it. And that's made it a little bit sharper, that bend. Bring the the, the, the bottom of the mouth round, bend downwards and just check that that's in the centre part of the mouth. Yes, it is. I'm going to turn it over because I've got a guideline here in red showing the wire tail that you need to cut. So I'm going to do that round and then cut that wire tail and then work on the other side of the mouth. So that's using the diagram as a guide. So what you should end up with is a little Cupid's bow mouth looking like that on the diagram so you've got the mouth then um, and we'll curl those wire tails in a minute so you've got the eyes done and the mouth done what I might do is curl those tails now just so that you've got that um, sorted out so I'm just going to move the template out of position for a minute and we'll curl the tails of the mouth and the um, the eyes so bring in some round nose pliers again I probably haven't gone through the tools that you need for this stage um, you'll need chain nose round nose and flush cutter pliers and you'll need um, a hammer uh, and a steel block so there's a steel block which I'll bring in later and the hammers which I'll talk about later but you can use small faced or large faced um, hammers um, for this or a combination of both so those are the tools you need for this section. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll work on the eye first, I think, and I'm going to make a curl. And so again, at the tip of the, the, the wire, I'm just going to, or the wire tail, I'm just going to make a little curl using the tips of my round nose pliers. So I made a little, little P like P loop. And the end of the wire always never, never gets straight because all the atoms are really compressed and pushed out to the end and it work hardens it. And so just take that end off so you've got a little C left behind. It becomes a little circular C. Bring it close to camera. And then I'm just going to make that into a curl. I don't have to curl the whole part of it, just a little bit. And then we'll shape that later on. So what you should end up with is um, a shape with two curled edges. Now, 
I've hammered that one, um, but we'll show you the ham hammering on this one in a moment. So, uh, but I haven't curled the other bar tail. With the mouth, similar thing. We're going to move from um, this this shape here to this shape. Uh, sorry, this shape here to this shape here. So I'm going to do quite a sharp bend upwards. Now I'll curl the end first of all. You curl the end first of all on both sides. Cutting the tail. So both sides, I've dropped my pliers on the floor, I'll sort that out in a second. Sorry about my the fingers. Are, my fingers are covered in sharpies in, mar in marker pens, so just forgive me. My fingers are covered in marker pens, so please forgive me. And then it'll curl around. I don't want to curl too much of this, just the end bit in the section. Because what I'm going to do is do a very sharp bend to bring this curl right up by the side of the mouth. So I'm going to 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 really bend it. To being the side of the mouth because I, I don't want much gap at the base the base of this mouth now that's got to fit right at the bottom of the circular shape so there we go so that's that and I'm going to just squish this mouth a little bit flatter because we might not have much room we might have to adjust this when we actually come to come to the stage because we fit the mouth on last when we, we assemble the shape so what we got so we've got a little mouth there and we've got the eyes and the mouth sorted out. So we're going to do hammer those. Um, I'll bring in the steel block. So steel block. Um, I'll just hammer the mouth um, because I've already hammered this piece. But I'll show you um, what we've what we've got. So let's take in a three. Oh, three. I might go for three ounce hammer. Sorry, two ounce hammer. But you can use a, um, a larger face hammer. It's just absolutely fine for the job, actually. So I'm going to move this into position. So, um, let's just, this has got a bit more precision. I tend not to hammer my fingers when I'm doing this. So, just hammer the whole thing, basically. Not missing out any bits of it. Keeping it nice and flat. We'll bend it around the face later on. In fact, actually, to fit it over the face, you'll just need it to make sure it's bent a bit like that. Because it will fit, fit nicely over the face. So, press it into position. And that's a little bit bigger. I want that mouth to be a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is adjust it so that it's a little bit narrower, the mouth is, and this is a little bit smaller, this curve is. A bit smaller. And fits really up by the side of the mouth as much as possible. I want that, that gap to be really quite small because I haven't got much space at the, at the base of the face now. I won't have when I'm later, when it's later on. So there we are, there's the, the, the mouth all hammered and ready. And we'll be able to use that later on in the, in the face. And if you feel that that's, you, you can adjust all these things when you come to fitting it to the face. You can adjust where the loops are, bring that up a little bit further, things like that, so to, just to get it to fit. So don't worry if you can't get it to fit straight away. That will fit over the mouth section quite nicely. So put those two on side, just, just telling you where to hammer the eyes. Don't hammer the eye socket itself. Just hammer the base of the nose, um, just here. And you hammer the top curl and the top curl. And um, you use the diagram as a guide. Basically, I've got a diagram that really tells you where those curls will be placed. If I move this block away now, move this diagram back into place because we're going to be working on it again. Um, you can see where those curls should fit into the face. So as you bend, manipulate and shape them around so they fit into that into over that term um, design there. So we've done the eyes and we've done the little mouth, um, and now we're going to move on and do the circular frames. We've got two frames, an inner frame and um and an outer circular frame. So I've got some wires to, to shape that with. Um I think I could use Probably use 15 centimeters of wire and you can use remember you can use excess for making jump rings and clasps and things like that I'm just going to get make it more than you need probably so I've got the same circular object actually that I use for the um, making the um, the actual sizing of the, of the frame 
off the little circular disc. So I'm just going to make a circle. And so if any sort of cosmetics makeup thing or anything like that will probably do. All right, so I'm trying not to show its brand. So just use that to shape a circle. Can you see that I've used that? And it makes a beautiful circle almost immediately. So um, I'm going to make the larger of the frames, the outer frame first, because the inner frame is made in exactly the same way. You basically make a circle um, around the cosmetics thing and then just um, bend downwards and then cut to the blue lines. So that's fairly simple. I just It's just made really similar te techniques to this, but I'll just get that frame out of the way and done and dusted. So the inner frame, make the circle, bend the wires down outwards and trim to, to those um, sections there. Okay, and then later on you can curl those ends um, and just in the same way you did the little mouth curls and things like that. So make sure those are curled later on. So the next thing to do is make this frame here that's going to fit it as a backing plate and it's going to hold the, the disc in place at the back. So it's quite important. So um, I've got these two, this the circular thing, the circular section of wire I've just made. And um, I made the circle so sort of vaguely in the centre of the of the um, of the, the wire that we used. I used about 20 centimetres, didn't I? So making a downwards bend at the top. Then I'm going to just just check I've got the right place because um, I'm going to shape that side and get that bit over and done with. And then I'm going to make that fit into place. Really be careful about this. We really want to make sure this is the right size because this is going to fit around your disc which is a bit like a cabochon and we've got to make sure it fits properly. Ah, you can see that slip round so just be a bit careful as you do this. And just make sure you keep that circle fitting over your frame line. That round and I've got that done so that's pretty good. Let's just check it fits. And also if you put your disc over um, in the into that little space and just check it fits into the space. So here's my disc and it fits nicely with a little gap around it. So I'm quite happy that that's, that's going to fit properly. So I'm just going to form one side of the backing. Um, again, you, um, I haven't drawn it on, on, on the other side. All you need to do is turn it over and form it on the other side. So um, just follow the orange line. Um, and just make sure this kicks back inwards. And then make a little circle here. So this is going to fit across the back of the backing plate. Sorry, the back of the disc. And it, it mustn't go more than halfway across the disc because it's going to all be on one side. So I made a curl, made a curl around, 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 around those pliers. And just made sure that this then just makes a little circular curl and then there we are, made a little circular curl and then cut that and cut that probably make a little bit more of a curl so just I'm just going to bring it round around those pliers a bit more there we go I haven't made it beautifully circular I'm really sorry there we go and that's one side of your back end frame that's one side of your backing frame, so I'll just cut that circle. Make the other backing frame in the same way. So check that positioning, just make sure that it fits across. Flip that over and form that one in the same way. So basically, that's what you should end up with. Um, a frame that, that, that looks like it will fit over the backing, backing plate. If I put the backing plate over it, it will fit into place nicely. That's lovely. So that's ready to go. So we have formed... The mouth, the eyes, an inner frame and an outer frame. And the last one to go is the, is the sun rays. So we'll just do that now. Um, you don't need to hammer these, by the way, although I would hammer this once you've made it into a little circle. Just hammer these little, little curls. 
and I'll show you that when we start the next stage. I'll have done that, okay? Um, next to do is make some um, sun rays. So I have cut the wire, but I can't find Oh, yeah, I put it at the top of the light box. So I'll make a bit of noise now, forgive me. Um, so I've made the end of the sun rays about here, um, rather than being at the top of the bottom, um, just because I wanted to hide hide the workings of it out of sight a little bit. I'm just going to make a few sun rays so you can see how to make them. So I'm going to start near one end and just make a little curl. Just there, so I've got that sort of in, in place. So I've made a little curl around, around those pliers, and this tiny little loop, and that's basically um, where I'm going to start my sun rays. So that's done. So there we go. And then I'm going to kick that downwards, kick that downwards, there like that, and then place it and start working over the diagram. I'm going to turn the diagram so it's a bit easier. And then I'm going to start just make, forming these rays. So they're just like curls, a bit like similar to the techniques used to form the face. Um, you rotate the diagram, use the diagram as a guide, take the wire off the diagram over so often, and and just and just uh, check it back on the diagram while you move it. There we go. So I'm starting to make some sun rays. This isn't. If you want to make them tighter, clamp either side of the bend, clamp, make them a bit more over tight, and then at, then extend outwards again. So I'll do that again because I think I went moved off camera. So I'm going to come back up and make the next one. I'll show you that. Um, so I've got to the base. I'll show you that technique again for the next one. Up for the next ray. Um, this will be the one at the bottom, so I don't make it too tight because I need to put um, a little hanging, something's going to hang from that. So don't make the end too tight, but what you can do is just squish the end, make it over tight, squish it and make it over tight, then bring it out again. It's really difficult to keep the, the uh, my hand in front of the camera because it's um, right at the top of the light box. And you can see there we go, I'll put it around to make the next sun ray. So what you should end up with, once you work all the way around, is a lovely sun ray pattern, like so. So that's how that fits around there like that. So um, and what I've done is hammered the whole lot of the sun rays so they're all lovely and flat. So I put them all on the steel block and used a large uh, faced planishing hammer and hammered a lot of them all lovely and flat. So we've got all our frames ready and now we're ready to assemble. So we've got um, an inner frame, a backing frame, and a main frame, I suppose we call it, a mouth frame and an eye frame. So now we're going to start on working it and add it, adding beads, move that into place, adding beads and assembling the whole place, so the whole face together. So we're going to start on the nose and eyes next. So I'll move on to that next. Now we're going to start adding beads into the eye section um, and you can see a finished sort of eye section here and I'm going to work on one, one side of the eye so you can see what to do and both sides obviously the same but in mirror image. So first of all I put one of the lovely yellow 11O um, seed beads on from the kit and to the centre of about a 60 centimetre section of um, uh, 0.4 millimetre wire and I'm going to put it across the um, corner, inner corner of the eye, like so. And the thing is that um, don't pull this inner corner of the eye too tightly. I want to get as big as possible to lie, allow that six millimetre bead to fit in place. So what I'm going to do is just work along this uh, lower section of the eye uh, and wrap along to about so uh, I can get to the the centre. I suppose the middle section of the eye. So just using the 0.4 millimetre wire to wrap around the eye frame. And then, and then what we'll do then is wrap to the centre. There we go. And that's ready for the next section to the next step. So 
that's there that's good so next thing to do is you work on the top of the eye so I've reached the, the halfway along the eye the lower part of the eye just by wrapping along leave that gap sitting in the gap I leave that little seed bead sitting in the gap so it doesn't pull it too close together wrap twice around the top of the eye and then add in 11 knots so it's lovely sort of sort of um gosh not a a topaz colour seed bead anyway it's beautifully sort of orange it's russety sunset orange thread it on and wrap to the top eyebrow wrap twice or three times there and if the wraps are too far apart just squeeze them together to make them look neat okay and with the sideways squeezes of chain nose pliers and then go put another one on so I'm going out of shot for a minute just put the other one on another orange bead on and then bring it back Wrap to the top of the eye. So you're just adding beads into the eyebrow, really. You see what I'm doing? And round we go. A bit more. Another, another couple of wraps. I'm not sure whether I. Yeah, one more. And then up to the top. So I'm going to get a, get another orange bead. Up to the top eyebrow up a couple of times oops I always get caught a couple of times there and then I'm going to bring it back if a kink happens in a while just unkink it straight away that you notice it bring it back with the fourth bead so coming out of shot again sorry and back to the middle of the eye we're going to be ready to add in one of the eye beads now the main eye beads um, and if you want to just pull it in so it's a bit tighter, a bit of a gap there, isn't there? In fact, actually, do you know what? I only added three beads, so forgive me. I'm going to take that fourth bead away. So don't add that fourth bead. Just come straight down at the back. Yeah, behind that bead. There we go. Sorry about that. Just add three beads in, one to the back, and then we're ready. To add in the eye bead so put that down i'm going to bring in a lovely six millimeter blue crystal bead and pop it uh, one wire 0 0.4 millimeter wire through one side of the bead and the other through the other and i always call it this is crisscross bead attachment that's what i call it so basically one wire comes out one side of the bead and one the other and you can see there's a um a little loop you're forming and then pull it into place in the eye. And I just want, just before I do that, I'm just going to make sure the eye socket is nice and wide enough to fit that into it. With a little chain nose pliers, so outward squeeze. That's lovely. So I pull that into place, and I'm just going to use the wires to wrap along to the end of the eye, the edge of the outer edge of the eye, and then uh, cut and trim it at the end. I'll just show you the lower part of it because it's basically it's the same for the top part. You might have a little job sort of with space because the bead sits quite close to the frame, but there should be enough room. Wiggle and jiggle it and you'll be fine. So bring that along. I'm just making sure these wraps are nice and tightly packed because you should do that. Um, it's difficult on demos when you're trying to, to move fairly quickly be absolutely as neat as you would be if you had plenty of time at home so you know just just um try that one um a little bit more when you're at home just to make sure it's all neat don't wrap right wrap, wrap right to the end just leave a bit of bare wire because you'll need that for attachment point later on bring the, the flush cutter pliers in really close to the frame on the inside edge like that and cut and then use a smoothing motion of chain nose pliers in the direction of the wire and you can see i'm just smoothing it round and you run your fingers over there and there's no sharp edge of wire so this is um, do the same on the top top um, edge you can see i've got a little wire tail there that i need to smooth down so i just move it in and then smooth it down so make sure you've got both eyes the same do the same on the other side and that's your iron nose frame done bring in the little disc it fits into place over the the iron nose frame with a kind of border of copper around it so that's what you should aim for 
So I'll pop that to one side for the minute and we're just going to work on the backing frame next. So bringing in the backing frame, just to show you, all I've done, I'll just talk through this a little bit, is attach a long length, probably about a metre actually, maybe a bit, yeah, a metre or something. Attached it around here and wrapped all the way along the, with from the midsection of the 0.4 millimetre wire, which you attached there, all the way along here on either side and bound around the back backing plate here. So that basically means that I've got a fairly sturdy attachment point already. So I've got, when I start to put, weave everything together and wrap everything together, everything's pretty much going to cinch into place and I, and I won't have the, the uh, copper disc falling out of place, which will be a pain. So before you start assembling everything together, just do that on the backing plate and make sure that you've got that um, uh, just attached in like that before you start. All right, so we're going to move on to the next um, section, which is um, assembly of the piece. Now we're going to start to attach the um, frames together. And it's a bit fiddly to start off with, um, but as you start to attach them more, more attachment points, then it all becomes a little bit more easy and steady. So what I've done first of all is um, attached two pieces, or quite long pieces, 0.4 millimetre wire, um, to the top and the bottom of the inner circular frame. You can see I've wrapped a few times around the top um, using the midsection of the wire and a few times around the base between the two bits. You can see I've curled those two little bits and hammered them now, but you don't hammer the rest of the frame. Um, and left these wire trails hanging back down. So we're going to use those to attach everything together at the base and the, and the top of the of the um, this circle. So first of all, we're going to start with the top and placing the little disc of, of the face, and this is going to slip around, so you're going to need to put it back into position every so often, into position over over the, um, forgive my dreadfully blackened dirty fingers, and try to clean off Sharpie with your, um, sorry, permanent marker with your with your hands and other other pens and beautiful pens are available is not a good idea um so try not to do that so i've placed them over they're not going to be sit perfectly for um to start with anyway but what i've done is made sure that the top of the head is sitting over the top of this um this backing plate and just make sure you squeeze the back of the backing plate so that everything's flat with chain nose pliers and you do the same at the base of this of this little um, inner frame so everything sits together nicely and holds together nicely so put them things in place I'm going to put that at the top um, for the face vaguely central if I can and just use that face to help space things out at the beginning this is going to be fiddly this is going to be fiddly to start with once we've got it all together it'll be absolutely fine so first of all, I'm going to attach the top. Again, this is all going to move about this first bit. You think, oh, I'm never going to be able to put this together. It's now I'm never going to be able to manage it. But actually, you will. And after you've got these things hanging together, first of all, everything starts to attach. And it's much, much easier. So I've threaded on 11, a lovely sort of um, yellow seed bead and wrap from the top to the outer frame. Don't pull too tightly because I just want a bit of a gap. I want to hold this so that it's um, just in position and just sits between the gap between the two frames and wrap a couple of times and do the same on the other side and on the other side too and we'll do the same at the base of the frame as well so we can start attaching everything together. So again Thread on a little yellow 11 nose seed bead so it sits between the gap between the two frames. And you can see how potentially this is going to start to fit together. So, a couple of wrap, one wrap there. Okay. Now, flip it round to the base. Try and centralise this now so that we've got the eyes and the nose all lined up with the middle of midline of the face. And this hasn't slipped around too much. It all, it all will slip around until you've got it all sorted out. So now we're going to use the base wire tails. I need you to throw, thread onto another yellow bead. You can also use those lovely oak of um, topaz orange beads as well. 
go to the base of the frame and just wrap a couple of times there and it will start to hold everything in together and that's better you see that just just holding everything in together now so a couple of wraps there okay and again on the other side so you've got four points of attachment and it'll start to sort of everything will start to hold it's just already a bit easier it's starting to sit into place um let's put that wire through there you find little gaps and thread them through and i use my pliers to help my my me pull things pull the wire through small gaps and think all these sort of things that help so use your chain nose pliers to thread through to help you pull if you see a point of wire coming through and you can't quite grab it with your fingers then use the pliers to help pull through so now you've got um it's sitting you can see it's starting to hold itself together after they, they, there's fiddly a point of attachment it's starting to look a little bit better now the next thing to do is bring the sun rays in so following the diagram um, just make sure you have one of the central points that's pointing straight upwards at the top and wrap around that place it right in the center of the frame wrap around that a couple of times you can see how this is going to hold itself together now we haven't we haven't added in the frame of the mouth yet or the eyes but I'm going to wrap a couple of times there on that side. Oops, a couple of times on that side, on the other side of the, the top sun ray. See what I've done? There we go. There we are. And then there. So that's the first sun ray sorted out. Moving to the base, I'm going to make sure this one lines up with this one. So I'm going to rotate this in my hands and just thread on another golden sea bead. Oh no, sorry, I don't need to do that yet. I don't need to thread on the sea bead, I need to just wrap around the frame. Duh, there we go, that's it. So just wrap around the frame, around the inner part of this on the inner bend of the, of the central one. So I can get these 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 midline central sun rays lined up and that, that's a really good sort of starting point for getting everything balanced. It just won't thread through, bear with me. Bring it down. There we go. I'm just going to wrap once around this side as well. You see now we've started to attach the sun rays to all these frames now. That's going really well. So we've made a start there. I'll just check everything's central. The face is central. These frames are central. Just want to make sure it's pressed into place. Now we're going to start. Um, we can, we're not quite ready to add the eyes in yet. I'll just, just go that. We might just be. Let's have a little look. Yes, so on this one, we're going to start adding the eyes on this traverse up. So I'm going to leave the bottom part of the sun for a bit. We don't need to work on that quite yet. So I'm going to just work on the top part of the face now. So what we're going to do is next, I'm going to add on another yellow bead and start to wrap to this brow here and around the frame. So poke the wire through underneath both frames. And this is where the pliers are going to be really helpful for, cat, for helping pull things through. Can you see now? So I'm just going to pull this into place. This is really, really helpful now. Just to pull it into place. There we go. And you can see now how this is going to assemble. And just make sure the lies are placed into their little depressions in the sockets. And I think three three wraps around each each part. And you see this the end of the wire starting to a little bit ragged and if you do that just trim the end of the wire off and it'll be easier to thread through small spaces but um, you can see how I'm using the pliers to help me pull through if you want to I think in some one of the suns I had the the eye frame sitting over the inner frame but it doesn't it doesn't seem to want to to fit like that today you can either have it sitting over the eye frame the inner frame or you can have it you can either have the iframe sitting over it or you can have it to the side of it as long as it's balanced on either side 
it's fine. So sometimes the face is just a bit different shaped. So you can see how I've done it three times here. And I'm going to add a, a yellow bead and go back to the to the frame, the outer frame. And it might almost be ready to be able to attach the next ray. I'm not quite there yet. So what I'm going to do is go down to the outer frame, wrap to that. Yeah, sorry. All the families come in now, so we're going to have lots of little other noises. So bear with me on that one. So I'm going to wrap to the outer frame and wrap around a couple of times. And then what I'm going to do then is attach the next sun ray. It's almost time to do that, so we can just cinch that into place. Now one more wrap round. You see what I'm doing there? And that's generally the, the that's the sort of the the way that we work round. So I'm gonna I'm gonna work round on each side a little bit um, and get ready to attach the mouth, which we're not quite ready to do yet. But you can see now, so I'm, I'm now attaching the next sun ray to the outer frame as I'm working round. And I could leave that there for the minute and then work on the other side so that you can help keep things balanced. So I've done quite a bit of work on this side. And then, so what I'm now gonna do is run up to this side and attach this eyebrow. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to work round the side of the face um, for a little bit on either side, and then I'll come back to you uh, when we're ready to start attaching the mouth, and we'll do a little bit of work, work on that. So that I'll come back to you in a few moments with that. Okay, we're returning now to a later stage um, along in the process of attachment and I've worked my way around the side of the face um, attaching on either side so it's all balanced attaching um, well binding to the inner and outer frames um, adding in 11 little beads as I go and attaching to the sun frame and in fact the face frame where it touches so I've done two binding to the face frame here and a binding to the eye side of the eye frame here on either side and the rest of them, as I've worked down this this the side frame here, um, the outer frame, I've attached the ray sun rays, and I've stopped at a point here um, where um, I've just checked that everything's balanced. You, you move the sun frame round so the rays, the base of the rays, are balanced, and squeeze it into place a little bit around to make sure everything's in in place because this this can can come up in, into the back of the. Um, sun ray sun face a little bit so do a bit of squeezing around to manipulate make sure these two especially are lined up centrally these two at top and the bottom um and i've stopped here so that i can start to attach the point of the mouth because i've got a little bit to work to do at the back as well um where i found it difficult um to thread through um sometimes you can't thread it through at that point because it's a bit tight against the frame. So I've found a little gap maybe further down and then pulled the wire back. So there's ways and means of getting that wire through. So I'm going to bring in the mouth now. We're ready to come up from the the back of the um the frame, the outer frame. And I'm going to bring in the mouth now and just check it fits. So what I've done is I've just you put the the mouth over the frame and just check it fits into place and make any adjustments um, as necessary to be honest if it if it doesn't quite fit properly so again you bring in a yellow bead and bring it up and attach in a very similar way to the to the eye frame and in fact just gonna thread it through well, I'm just finding the gap is a little bit awkward to start with because again you just got to find a gap it might fit very closely against that bit of frame but if you wiggle further along you find a gap so then you know, have to pull it back into place that so just catches it at the right point so just take a bit of time that first attachment always just takes a bit of time to do there we go that's into place and wrap that once around again Pulling it through, maybe a third, a few more times. I should do the other side, um, but what we need to do on that return pass is catch behind to the, all these frames at the back to cinch them into the back frame. So I'm going to return again when I've done that, just to show you that. And I'm going to also work around 
to the side on either side. Just make sure the mouth is balanced as you go so that everything lines up along the face. So I'll be back in a few moments to show you that. Right, um, I've now worked all the way around this little sun face until um, my wires from the bottom of the lip uh, mouth have, have reached the ones on the side of, the, of your face. I've already cut away um, the two wires on that side and tucked the wires in. I'll just show you the process on this side. Um, so let's do that now. So keeping flush cutters as close to the frames as possible, just um, cut in there and that one there and then we'll tuck those in neatly and out of the way. Just make sure there's plenty of wraps in around frames when you when you do those final attachments. Um, what have I done? As I, as I went, I just made sure that everything was balanced. I made sure the mouth was lined up. Um, I made sure that the I make sure the wraps are nicely um, balanced on either side. Um, I made sure that I cinched into these bits at the back, and this looks a little bit messy. So all you can do is just move these curls in out of the way. Start pressing the frame in onto, over the back of the the cabochon, so that's all pressed in nicely, and those sharp edges. Just make sure the sun rays are balanced around. Um, balanced around the the sun, so that's that's pretty much balanced there. Um, what else did I do? I just made sure that um, if I wrap twice to the side of the mouth, um, that could come up a bit there, a little squeeze there. Um, and I also made sure I caught in these little curls at the back, and and there. So that's the the face attached. But we've got these little drill holes because what we need to do is just make sure these. Um, although they're pretty firmly into place, you need a little bit of an extra wire attachment just to bind these into place. So just to bind the face frames to the to the cabochon, which we made out of the copper sheet. So I've got a little bit of um, 0 0.4 millimeter wire, which I'm going to try and find. There we go. So I put that. I have lost my wire rail. Just quickly get that. I only need a short length. I had cut some, but I don't know where I put it. So um, I'm going to take about 30 centimetres of wire and I'm going to thread it through from, from the two side holes on the lower side of the nose, just thread through the, the, from the back through to the front. And so both the wires project through from the back equally on either side. So I can do that now. And then what I'm going to do is thread on a yellow bead to either wire and then thread the wire through the central nost central forehead hole. Okay, like that. And then do that one there. Just make sure when you do this that the bead catches into place Just above the nose rather than it being below. Okay, just, just catch your fingernail like so. And the same with this one. I'm pulling the wire through from the back. Pull, that's it. Now I'm going to turn the piece over and we're going to go back through those little eye holes again. I've just, what have I done? I've just caught a bit of wire in this one. It's been caught, so I'll just get this out of the way. So it's ready to come back through the first holes you put the wire through. So pulling that tight. So we're going to make a second attachment round, but without adding a bead in this time. So, so I'm pulling that wire through from through that side. And that wire through. You know, so there's two wires are fitting through there quite nicely. And then Pass them both back through the forehead hole. Just make sure the bead sits equally. Back through this one. Just might need a bit of adjustment to make sure everything's tight and everything's balanced. Haven't quite done that, but. You take a bit more time than I will. 
make sure they're balanced back through that central hole again with both wires and then bring the wires back through up towards the mouth um so we're going to just attach through there we are spring that into place there we go that's it now both wires tight through the back and pass both wires oh i'm going to trim them so both the same same length it's just a bit easier to thread through that's it and then pass them through one of the mouth holes for the upper one just below the nose actually there we go should come through just holding my breath so i'm stopping talking you often hold your breath just to get the get yourself from there we are pulling that through nicely press that wire into the back of the frame and then i'm going to pull both those wires through the back of the front of the um, over the top of the lip from the back over the top of the lip through from front to back through again pull and just make sure everything's central as much as possible just take a bit of time to adjust this will look amazing oxidized i have just haven't had time to get that done um but it will be amazing pop a ball pop it in a little bag with a bit of old with a bit of boiled egg and, and then polish it up with a polishing cloth and see what happens it would be, be amazing um or let it oxidize naturally um because that's what happens to copper um and uh, those two are sort of quite good ways of, of oxidising. I passed it through again. I haven't got time on this video to do that. But I passed it through again on the main finish pendant. And then what I did was um, I, I'll bring the pendant in. I wrapped these two wires around the side struts at the back. Can you see what I did there? Just to fix it into place and, and also make it neat and tidy and attached. So the next thing we're going to do, so we've made the, sun, the, the pendant up and the next thing we're going to do is um, have a little look at these little dangles and just make a couple of those and then you can probably complete your pendant nicely. So we'll move on to that next. Next I'm going to start making these little, little suns and moons that we're ha having as the little dangles from the pendant. Um, and they're ever so useful. I've used them in the earrings as well. Um, so we're going to show you how to make these little dangles from there. So um, starting off, we're going to use a disc cutter. Um, it just makes it so much easier when you're cutting circles. And I'm just using two of them, the five um, over um, five eighths and a half inch one. Um, so I've already cut one out using the half inch one. That's one we're going to use for the little moons. But I'm going to show you how to make sorry the like the whole the whole means full means and then we're going to make a half mean up using a larger disc cutter so i'm just going to show you basic techniques for that so removing this um peg because it comes with a block with lots of circles with this peg in it um and uh, it's really lovely for making really lovely discs and you can do all sorts of things with them and make um bead caps and things like that i'm just going to put a scrap bit of metal into place um we're still, which still is nice and flat. I'm putting this snugly into into place, and I'm going to use my metal work hammer to have a good old bash at this. So hold it in place, and then bash, bash, bash. There we go. And that little drops up, drops out of the back, and you've got this perfect little circle. Very often, this gets a little bit of stuck, so just knock it a couple of times. It comes through the back, as it comes uh, ready for use again and this is lovely the circular cut that's gone um, and we've got this little um, circle now you can use that on its own for all sorts of things but we're going to make a little half moon with it so we're going to go down and use the half one half inch and we're just going to put this circle into place just so that probably about you can see about half of it maybe in the circle you see that just projecting in like that Maybe just even to see the edge of it. And then I'm just going to put this into place gently. It's just slipped, so I'll come back in again. Gently. 
into place. You can have to make a few of them until you get some that look the same. And then flash into place. It's already just zoomed out actually. And I've got a little half moon, a little half moon sitting there, a little spare thing which you could use as a leaf or something like that, all sorts of little things you could use it for. Um, and all I've done is pop two drill holes in the top and bottom of that, uh, or that you can use the top. Just make sure these are a little bit sharp, so go around it with a file and um, just file it down. I haven't got my files here at the moment, I've just got a bit of sandpaper, but um, just make sure you file these edges down so that they're not too um, sharp, really, really, so make sure they're, they're blunted off, okay? And um, you don't want this sticking in your body, really. So go around it and just make sure that that end is really sharp, probably with a file rather than this bit of sandpaper, but it's all I've got to hand at the moment. So I've got the half moon made, um, and just to show you the little the little um, texturing on the moon. So you can see we've got a bashing texture compared to that. So I've got a metalwork block. There's my block. I'll use a metalwork. And just pop. Often you use a, um, so a block for metalwork and you use a block for really fine finishing. So a few marks on it won't matter too much. So here we go. Just use a ball head um, hammer. Um, I might go for a slightly heavier than two ounce or something like that. And keeping your fingers away as much as you can. Just do some bashing. And you've got that texture of the moon surface on the top and bottom. Bash it into place. And then just, you can either keep the edge irregular, but just make sure you sand it off a little bit so that it's no sharp edges before you use it. But you've got that lovely sort of texture surface on that side. So again, um, put a drill hole in there um, and I'm moving it all away. You've got these little charms then which you can hang on the bottom of um, and I just added the tap bead tassel in because I just wanted it, it looked quite nice actually. Um, but what I did is just add some wrap loop head pins um, and I've demonstrated one of those in the sunflower um, um, demo this in the other hour actually but wrap the head pins and you can make this, these lovely dangles and for the earrings it's very similar all you're doing is making things on a much smaller scale without all without maybe the inner frame just make it 0.8 wire and just um, just make it on a smaller scale and add it in for the earrings and very similar so there we go. I hope you enjoy making the sun designs. Um, and um, if you want to scale it up for the big sun and all the the, uh, the dangles from there um, and have fun, um, please um, tag me when you post on Facebook. I'd love to see what you make. Um, and um, I hope this inspires you to have a real go with metal sheet uh, and combining it with wire work. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration today and I very much look forward to um, seeing the pieces that you make um, on Facebook. Please tag me when you do so I don't miss it. I'd love to see what you make um, and if you get run into any problems or issues please contact me and I'll do my very best to help um, and I just hope um, I've helped you along your way and inspired you to help um, to try um, working with copper sheet. Um, the, the kits are lovely the colourways are beautiful, so I hope you enjoy working with them. Thank you. Bye-bye.